So these are pretty significant developments today, recommendations out of the National Transportation Safety Board. But while much of what the NTSB said today is directed at Boeing and the FAA, there are bigger questions as flying around the globe continues to take off. The cockpit of an airliner in trouble can suddenly become filled with shaking control columns, warning horns, a cacophony of sound, each with its own meaning. And in the crashes of the two 737 MAX jets in Indonesia last October and Ethiopia in March, the National Transportation Safety Board says Boeing made incorrect assumptions about how average pilots could handle all that information in a life or death emergency. What we have found is that there's a mismatch between the assumptions that the Boeing used and the FAA allowed and those assumptions that we've seen on these accident flights. Robert Sumwalt leads the NTSB, which participated in the foreign crash investigations, and tonight is making recommendations, and not just confined to Boeing. The safety board also wants changes from the FAA. Well, it does not necessarily pertain just to the 737 MAX. Another accident cited by the NTSB, Air France Flight 447, which crashed from cruise altitude into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean 10 years ago. That plane was in Airbus 330 when pilots were confused by bad sensor data and a loss of orientation. There can be a critical lag between recognizing as a problem and recognizing how to address that problem. Todd Curtis is a former Boeing engineer and runs the website airsafe.com. He now lives in Boston. What sort of assumptions, not just Boeing, but the entire industry was making with respect to what kinds of pilots are in the cockpits? Now, the NTSB also calling for stepped up use of technologies to help pro pilots prioritize situations where multiple warnings come into play happening simultaneously. Boeing today says it is working, willing to work with the FAA and the NTSB on these, these recommendations. I, I know we've talked a lot about simulators. I know you've spent plenty of time in simulators. Are they getting enough attention? Well, so the question really is about how realistic are the simulators? The answer is the simulators have gotten incredibly realistic, and I've just watched them transition really from sort of stand, like TV, standard definition, into these very modern, super capable. I mean, you really get sucked in when you're in there. But one of the things that the NTSB says still, and he said, I mean, Sumwalt says, I've watched people sweat in simulators, but you still sort of know when you're in trouble, you're still on the ground. Right and you're really not way up in the air, and so you know you're going you're gonna to be okay. And this idea, if you can, um, of keeping up with technology, of pilots trying to keep up with the changing technology of our right. aircraft, that's really not new. It's, it's not new. This, this has been a growing issue, what's called pilot overload, really since about the mid-1980s. Mm -hmm. um, it has been building. We are putting more technology. Technology is one of the reasons why things are safer, like uh, the ground proximity warning system. Right. So one of the major causes of crashes, and this is a technology developed by Honeywell right here in western Washington in Redmond, used to be the most common fault is, is pilots innocently sort of flying into a mountain, kind of losing their situational awareness. That has been eliminated by this technology. We are far safer because of it, but you still have to get down to basic airmanship. Glenn, thank you.